Today marks 156 years since the last major earthquake along the Hayward Fault. That 1868 quake leveled buildings, killed more than 30 people. And as our Brian Hackney looks back and talks to geologists who warn, well, the clock is ticking toward the next big one on the Bay Area's most dangerous fault. That's that stuff. A beer with a seismologist. Not a bad idea when you're on the subject of the Bay Area's most dangerous fault. Today we have two million people sitting directly on top of the Hayward Fault. It's the most urbanized fault in the United States. In fact, it's probably the most urbanized fault in the world. Well, choose your poison. It could be the San Andreas or it could be the Hayward Rogers Creek Fault. With the Pacific Plate to the west, to the east, the North American. Separated by the fragile crust of creeping earth, building up the strain on the Hayward Fault. This is the trace of, of the Hayward Fault. Where I'm standing here, this is 20% of all the movement between the North American plate and the Pacific plate passing through my legs on this one narrow zone. As the plates move, stress accumulates, and then every once in a while, the stress is too much, and the fault snaps, and that's the earthquake. The last big quake on the Hayward Fault, October 21st, 1868. This 1868 Hayward earthquake was so powerful, the Sacramento River totally changed directions and empty. And then it washed back in a two-foot wave. San Leandro, massive damage. A fissure opened up nine miles long. And they said, we thought the world was coming to an end. Time has erased all traces of the 1868 quake. But the fault's still here. I would guarantee you that that person has no idea that they just crossed the Hayward Fault. We do know exactly where it is. The so Hayward has a characteristic that we call fault creep. And this side of the fault is a little bit higher than this side of the fault. The fault is moving all the time. It breaks the surface. It breaks roads. It breaks sidewalks. It creates these cracks. 270 degrees. 49 minutes, and these are in minutes and seconds. Austin Elliott leads a survey crew to monitor how much the fault is creeping. We just do annual measurements up and down the fault to track how much and where it's moving. This site has about six millimeters a year, uh, and it varies year by year. But this isn't the whole story. Eventually, this fault is going to move in a larger jerk. It may move five or six feet. And when that happens, we're going to have our next big earthquake on the Hayward Fault. And when it happens, didn't we prove we could survive something like Loma Prieta? A magnitude 7 on the Hayward Fault would be so much worse. This was anything but the kind of test that we will eventually get in the Bay Area. The last time it snapped, there was hardly anyone on the tax rolls in the East Bay. Well, there was only like 551 people who were taxed, who made enough money to be taxed. Today we have two million people sitting directly on top of the Hayward Fault. And since the 1868 quake, the stress has just been building and building and building. Stressing the Hayward and its northern extension near Santa Rosa, the Rogers Creek Fault. Our estimate uh, of the magnitude of both win at once is uh, 7.2 to 7.3. It has been 156 years since 1868. As for how often big quakes happen. We have a record of 12 earthquakes in the last two millennia on this fault. So that means they happen on average every 150, 160 years. So with all of our uncertainties, we're smack in the middle of the window when we expect something to happen. It's about due. 